Hello everyone and welcome. I really like these little Nordic looking gnomes that seem to be everywhere these days and wondered whether I could work out a pattern for an English paper piecing version of one since I love English paper piecing and find it very restful. After a bit of trial and error I came up with this design. If you'd like to make one yourself a PDF of the pattern is given in the links below. Print it onto thin card, mine is 200 GSM, and then cut it out. The body and the hat are English paper piecing, but the nose is not. For those without access to a funnel, a pattern for one of these is on the second PDF sheet, together with a couple of optional hats, which are not English paper pieced. Cut the pattern pieces from the card. I'm using offcuts of cotton material from eBay for my gnome. Place each template onto a single piece of cotton fabric and cut around them, adding an extra one centimetre or three eighths of an inch fabric all the way around the template. You could use one of the triangle body pieces and fold your material so as to cut out four shapes at once, but only one piece will be needed for the base. When the four triangles and one square base of the body are cut out of the material, I find it easier to pin the fabric to the card before tacking them to reduce movement. Using a strong needle, thread it with a contrasting cotton. Fold the top small edge down first. Then fold over one side and secure with tacking stitches. Work to halfway down the side. Then fold the fabric in the corner over the corner point of the card template. Hold this down and then fold the side and base edges over to make a neat mitre. Tack these in place. Repeat at the next corner point. Then work your way up the other side to the top. Do this for all five templates, carefully securing the corners to keep the mitre in position and removing the pins as you go. Thread a needle with cotton which matches your material, doubling it and knotting it at the end.
Then take the base template and with right sides together, match up the bottom of one of the triangles to one side of the base carefully. Secure your thread at one corner and begin to over sew or whip stitch the two pieces together, catching just the fold edges of the material, not the card if possible. Try to ensure that your stitches are quite close together. If you are to fill your gnome with ground walnut shells as I shall do, you'll need to reduce any gaps where the templates meet one another or the walnut shell pieces will escape. This will make a mess and your gnome will rapidly diminish in stature. With one side of the base fixed to the base of one triangle side, take the next triangle and repeat with the next base side and so on until all four triangles are attached to the base. Now fold up two triangle sides with right sides of the fabric together. Over sew their side seams to the end of this side edge only, not the top neck edge. Repeat for the other sides. When all four sides are fixed together, using a stitch on picker, remove the tacking stitches. This will release the card inside so that it can be removed. When all five pieces of card have been separated from the fabric, turn the shape inside out. This is tricky as the neck of the gnome is quite small. I find it helps to use the end of one of my thin paint brushes to push the fabric from the base up through the neck and once that's done, ease out the corners of the base. You could use a chopstick or similar to achieve the same result. Find a strong thread to gather up the neck area. I'm using a six strand embroidery silk of the same colour as the material with a strong knot in the end of it. Sew small running stitches around the neck of the gnome and stop when you reach the starting point. Do not fasten it off.
I find it helpful to have a tray on which to carry out the next task. If you're using ground walnut shells, fill a small jug with around 150 grams of them, which should be sufficient to fill the known body. If you have a small funnel, you can use it here. Otherwise, there's a PDF template for a paper funnel in the links below. Place your funnel into the neck of the gnome and hold this gently with one hand. Slowly pour the walnut shells into the gnome body, tamping it down every so often to allow the shells to settle. You may have to do this quite a lot as it can take a while. If you don't do this, you may think your gnome is full, but settlement could then take place after you've fastened up the neck and you might end up with a sagging gnome and it will be difficult to add extra walnut shells later. Don't pour too many shells in at once as your gnome gets fuller as they may overflow and make a mess, hence the need for a tray. When you think you can't get any more shells inside the gnome, pick up your needle with the embroidery silk and gently begin to gather the neck, easing the fabric above the gathers into the gnome body. I used my paintbrush stem again to facilitate this process. When all the material above the gather is inside the body, pull the embroidery silk really tight and fasten it off. Then sew across the top of the neck and fasten off again, doing this a few times to secure the top and reduce the chances of the shells escaping. You could fill your gnome body with a different form of stuffing and it should be fine, but the ground walnut shells give the figure much more heft and consequently more uses. Now the body is complete. Cut out two pieces of fabric using the hat templates, adding the usual one centimetre or three eighths of an inch allowance all round. Pin and then tack these as you did with the body sections. Over sew or whip stitch them together along the top and side edges, but not the bottom. When complete, remove the tacking stitches and take out the cardboard templates. Using thread of the same colour, hem along the brim of the hat. Turn the hat inside out and place it on the gnome body. Select a small piece of fake fur fabric and sit it under the hat and resting it in the middle of the front body. This should help you to determine how long you want your gnome's beard to be. Cut the fur to the desired length.
pin the fur onto the front of the gnome, making sure it sits up under the hat a little. Using thread of the same colour as the fur, doubled and with a knot in the end, remove the hat and begin to attach the fur, ensuring it is straight by checking how it looks regularly. I found a circular needle helped me to do this, but you can manage with a long straight one. I sewed across the top of the fur and then secured it underneath too. Now cut out the nose template and fabric the same size. This is not English paper piecing, so no extra material allowance is necessary. Using thread of the same colour as the nose, doubled and with a knot in the end, sew a circle of running stitches in the same place on the material as is shown by the dotted line on the template, leaving a small amount of fabric above the stitches. When your stitches end up back at the start of the circle, do not fasten it off. Instead, pull on the thread and begin to gather up the nose. When it forms a small bowl shape, fill it with a modest amount of stuffing. You may find a chopstick helpful to push the filling into the shape. Keep pulling on the thread to tighten the gathers and ease the material allowance in with the filling. Pull the thread up tightly when the allowance is inside the shape and fasten off the thread, but don't break it. As with the neck, take a stitch across the back of the nose shape and pull it tightly, securing the thread again. Do this a few times until you have produced a somewhat spherical shape. Keeping the thread attached, place the hat back on the gnome and position the nose in the middle of the fur beard a short distance below the brim of the hat. Check that the nose is also in the middle of the front body section. When you're happy with the nose position, push a pin through the middle of the nose to secure it to the gnome body and beard. Remove the hat and sew the nose all the way around in this position. Remove the pin when you've completed this. You can now just place the hat on the gnome and leave it loose or you can position it, pin it in place, and then sew a few catching stitches all the way round to secure it. If you want your hat to look fuller, you could fill it with stuffing first, but pinning it will make it easier to sew it level. There are another couple of hat patterns on the second PDF sheet linked below, if you would like to try these. They're not English paper piecing though, and need to be sewn with right sides together, with an inside seam, hemmed, and then turned out. These little gnomes can be used as paperweights, 
pincushions, pin sharpeners, air fresheners as my ground walnut shells included lavender and gave off a lovely fragrance and Christmas or Halloween decorations depending on the colours you've chosen. I hope you have fun making them. <laughs>